Hi everyone, welcome to this week's ESO Live. <laughs> always CJ, always there to clap and cheer for us. I'm here for you, Gina. Um, Gina Bruno, Assistant Community Manager for ESO. And I'm Jessica Folsom, English Community Manager for ESO. And... Thank you so much we, for tuning in. We were just talking about like, oh, I don't really know how to intro this other than, <laughs> well, here we are. <laughs> and thank you for tuning in and following us on Twitch, all of you who follow us. Thank you very much. You can always see when our we go live when you follow us on Twitch. Indeed. Well, you want to take a look at the outline. We should look at the outline. Okay. Go over it real quick. So first, we're going to start up with our official news section. After that, we will get into our fan creations showcase. Then we're going to talk to software engineer David Leeper for Life at Zoss. Then we will dive into the Ask Us Anything, where we've chosen questions from the forums, and we'll answer them. Then we'll take a look at some of the ESO community events happening for the next week, so you know what you can do in-game if you want to hang out with other players. And lastly, we're going to have our Alliance War Q&A with our lead PvP designer, Brian Wheeler. Very exciting. And of course, giveaways through the show, as always. Yes. Yay, giveaways! So let's go ahead and dive into the official news recap. We've got some new stuff, some old stuff to go over. So let's take a look. Oh, when it's oh, all right. So we've had a lot going on over the last couple of weeks, and we have more coming. So first off, uh, Tamriel Unlimited as all of you probably know is now live. We are up to patch 2.0.2, .2, which came 2. out this 0. week. 2.0. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> <laughs> um, so along with Temria Unlimited, uh, the Crown Store went live. So now you can buy all sorts of little pets and mounts and costumes. Mm -hmm. Exciting stuff in there. And we plan um, on updating it ev every, month. every month. We will be doing a Crown Store update. Uh, we will be doing one in April, and we have a couple to show, um, just some little things that are going to be included. So this is the Bankin, a little pet that will follow you around. A little creepy. <laughs> Can we see something less creepy? Oh, Aww. look how sweet! <laughs> I just want to boop his little nose. <laughs> <laughs> So these two pets will be available in April, along with a few other items. You can buy them. Awesome! <laughs> and uh, crowns, for all of you who uh, already subscribed, all the crowns have now been um, distributed. So if you haven't checked, you should have a stockpile of crowns Go waiting check. for you. Uh, we also distributed the striped cinch tiger mm -hmm. to everyone that was eligible. We have seen so many people riding around on those even entire battalions running around. I love watching all the videos where they're all just standing in a row yeah. and they all roar <laughs> together. <laughs> yep. We also recently, with patch 2.0.2, .2, increased experience gains in Cyrodiil and in Trials. That's not the end of it, though. We are actually looking at increasing in experience gains um, in addition, such as in Dungeons. We are. Um, <laughs> we, <so> are. <laughs> we are. We <laughs> are. Man, I am just witty today. The master of transitions. I know. It's, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> um, so we know there's been a lot of discussion on the forums about lag. We've seen complaints about lag, uh, not just in Cyrodiil, but also PvE areas mm -hmm. and in dungeons. Um, don't really have any real news, but we are actively investigating it. Uh, we're going to put up a... <laughs> See, I'm sorry, I see Wheeler in the background just making faces and <laughs> crazy. Ed, stop, oh, it, sorry. Sorry. stop it. <laughs> uh, we are actively investigating the lag in PvE areas and in dungeons. I know some of you have said that you see it a lot in the daily dungeons. Mm -hmm. um, we'll likely put up a forum post pretty soon, um, just kind of listing out all the information that we would find especially helpful. Yep, so, and our engineering team will dig into that once we get that, that information. Faux sure. show. Um, XP potions is another thing that we've seen a lot on the forums. Uh, we do want to let you know that the screenshot that was posted, that was data mined, so that's okay if it's data mined, but it's not final. So uh, we will be having XP potions at some point in the future in the Crown Store. Uh, we're still trying to work out exact details on what the stats are going to be, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Length, so, who can use it. We will let you know. So next up, um, 
We also made some important PVP improvements in patch 2.0.2. There is still more to come, of course, but we increased siege weapon damage against other player characters. Now, in addition to that, we also identified a bug where certain abilities and passives are increasing the siege weapon damage on top of the increase we made. That is not intended, and we are working on a fix. So after we release the fix, you will see a slight decrease in siege, siege weapon damage. It'll go back to what we intended it to be. That has actually been in the game for a while. <laughs> but with the recent increase and in champion uh, system passives, it became a lot more apparent. So those of you saying that you're getting hit for 40k damage, by siege weapons, you're not imagining it. It is happening, <laughs> and that will get fixed. Um, we also increased, tre increased trebuchet damage um, against keep walls. So that was another 2.02. .02. And increased player character battle level stats, and also reduced guards damage and health. So we feel all of that has really helped. It's not the end, though. There will, there will be more improvements coming, and Brian Wheeler will be on the show to talk about it a little bit later. Well. Enough about what's already happened. <laughs> Let's talk about what's happening. Um, on Monday, we are going to be releasing patch 2.03. Mm -hmm. um, we are still kind of going through verifying all the fixes, but we have a couple that we can share with you. Um, there's a Templar ability, Rite of Passage. Um, that is actually now going to heal all player characters that have the lowest health in the area, rather than anyone who's closest to the caster. Uh, Molten Whip, Dragon Knight ability. Uh, there was an issue where this ability wasn't providing the increased damage to Ardent Flame ability morphs that use stamina, so that will be fixed. Yay! Um, for the champion system, in the Apprentice constellation, Spell Erosion, um, this passive was having a much lower effect than desired, so that will be fixed awesome. come Monday. Um, they're also looking at uh, potentially increasing XP that you get from Trials bosses. Great. So hopefully that'll make it into Monday as well. Awesome. And recently we have had a couple new pieces of uh, merchandise, ESM merchandise, come up for pre-sale. We have the Bull Netch plush, which you guys have seen us wearing oh. on our heads off and on <laughs> on the <this> show. <laughs> um, and we've also had the Tales of Tamriel Volume 1, The Land Book, which is a collection of stories from the game and a lot of really nice looking art that you can see here. It's got sections for each of the alliances. It's very nice. It's very cool. <laughs> um, that is also available for pre-order on the Bethesda store. You know, just in case it wasn't clear, we do have more than just those fixes going into 2.03. <laughs> uh, that was just a couple little yeah. teasers. There, those are some that have be been absolutely verified by QA and are definitely going in, and they're working on verifying others. Right. You know, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just three. Uh, lastly, we did put up a blog today on our website. There's going to be an art exhibit at a uh, local college here in Maryland, CCBC, down in Essex. If you're local, we'd love to see you. Um, it kicks off today. There's going to be an opening reception at um, 6, 6 o'clock p.m. PM mm -hmm. and also an art panel featuring some of our artists here that worked on ESO at 8 o'clock p.m. Um, on the screen, well, there it goes. Well, <laughs> what you saw were, uh, like, there it is again. Uh, these are a couple of things from Rothgar. These will be on exhibit. This is Orsinium. And the other one was, you know, just a cool screen. Some nice lighting. I actually am not sure what. It's part of Rothgar too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you're local, this will be running until I believe May fifteenth. I know it's May. May something. I Check the, the website. <laughs> <laughs> so that about wraps up all of our news. Uh, coming up next, we're going to dive into some fan creations. Okay, so as usual, we are going to just kind of glance at some of our favorite art pieces from the past couple weeks. This first one is from Isriana, who has done so many art pieces for us. This one is titled Springtime in Old Strasmachai. 
Um, this was originally supposed to be a simple speed painting of Stress Mackay, but then um, apparently Ezriana was reminded of a song in Skyrim that she likes to hum occasionally, and she started elaborating, and it turned into this wonderful work of art. It's very pretty. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a red guard. Yeah, this is a red guard lady enjoying a nice spring evening on the shores. This is La Coast um, by Theme Finland on DeviantArt. And uh, Theme Finland says that this is a commissioned piece for the player, oh boy. Oh, good luck with that. Nygalt, <laughs> <laughs> featuring their Argonian character, La Coast, sharpening his daggers on a cliff. That's where I usually like to sharpen my daggers, is hanging <laughs> off of the edge of a cliff. <laughs> So here is Free at Last from Teller123 oh, on DeviantArt. Now this is from our cinematic trailer, the last one, oops, spoiler alert. Um, the, <laughs> the artist really liked the Breton especially, really liked his emotions on the face and the stylish armor, and he really was touched by this tragic moment. So if you haven't seen the end yet, well, this is you what You should happens. go watch it. <laughs> This one is titled Guar Love. I love this. By Kaya Mel on DeviantArt. It's very cute. <laughs> um, so this was created by artist Kai from the United Kingdom. It looks like this is her Dunmer character with her beloved Guar Mel. This should be an idol in the game. If you have a Guar mount, you just kind of do this if you're standing yeah. around for too long. <laughs> Rest your chin on their head. Next, we have a uh, Coronas portrait. Well, you see the name who wrote it here. <laughs> I'm not going to try. And folk. And folk. Let's Fo hope. Folk way, maybe. <laughs> uh, this is a portrait of his Bosmer character, uh, Coronas Greenshade. Very nice. That's some big antlers. Oh, man, that's very bore out of me. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> this is two images, uh, Player Character and Nord are the titles, by Mr. Kelzak on DeviantArt. And this is, like it says, a portrait of the player's two characters in black and white. He looks really I love mad. the beard. <laughs> I love the beard. Here we have a commission piece, um, Ebb and Wind, by Ketsura. Uh, this is Ebb and Wind's in-game character, Creamy? Crimey? Crimey? Yeah. Either way. We've <laughs> actually featured pieces from that artist too, I think, right? I Unless think so. there's just a lot of commission pieces going around. It's very cute. <laughs> and this is our last piece. This is Harlwister. I hope I'm not mispronouncing your name, Har Harlwister. Sorry. Ilathar? E Ilthar? Sorry. <laughs> So this is a commissioned piece for the player of Elven by Iced Wings Art, who we've definitely featured before. Um, artist is, the artist's name is Kolsnikova Olga from Russia. Wow, nice. Did you do, practice that? No, I can do Russian better than I can do character names, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I think it's time for our first giveaway. Yay! We totally forgot what the name was going to be. So we're going to be giving away a mud crab plushie. This guy? A sealed on one. Head. Put it on my head? Put okay. it on your head. Okay. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yep. No, there it is on my head. So the, <laughs> the key word is going to be crabby. Like, I don't know, crabby patty. Right? This guy's very squishy. With a C. Who is that talking? Shh. It's with a C and a Y and an R and some P's. Anyway, I don't see anyone saying crabby. There we go. They're starting. Oh, they're all saying head crab. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so type nice. crabby into chat and you might win your very own mud crab plush. And this guy comes with an in-game pet, right? Yep. Crab. And that, that disembodied voice you heard is our Life at Sauce guest, who you will meet in a bit. <laughs> is this mic even on? His mic is on. Go ahead. Oh. Hi. Oh, hey. Uh, you can't <laughs> see me, but Hey! <laughs> crabby, crabby, crabby. Okay, let's see if we can get a winner. It is Choo Choo Mouse. <laughs> that is a great name. 
Lovely. Choo Choo I Mouse. I just feel like they do this on purpose, just so we can say it out loud. Well, congratulations, Choo Choo Mouse. <laughs> uh, Jason will be in touch with you on Twitch chat. If you're not following us, it'll likely go into your other folder. So check all of them. Um, all right. Well, so next. As promised, our Life is Lost segment, and we will meet who this mysterious <laughs> gentleman is next to us. <laughs> All right, so we have with us today David Leeper. And you are a software engineer here at SAUCE. Yep. Um, as a reminder, we will be taking questions for him after his short Q&A. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and we will grab some for him. <laughs> so welcome. Hey, it's good to be here. Yeah. Thank uh, you so much for coming. Love your shirt. Thank you. Yeah. What, what, loves your shirt what does the bottom say? This is your welcome. That's awesome. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what you, uh, what you... <laughs> yeah, yeah, cats definitely do that. Anybody who's had a cat knows. <laughs> So what is your current role at Zoss and what do you do? So my current role and basically what's been my role the whole time I've been here is uh, to work on systems that you would see before you get into the game. So something that you guys have all seen is the installer. Uh, I had a pretty big hand in that. It was myself and one other person uh, wrote pretty much all the code that went into the installer. Uh, the launcher, the original one, if you, we have any beta players here, uh, I wrote that pretty much by myself. We used a vendor. Uh, back yes. end, and then I was alone. That was a team of one. Uh, but thankfully, by the time we got closer to launch, um, and in the in the probably eight or so months leading up to it, uh, my team was expanded Yay. to three. Woo! Uh, <laughs> so now we have a front end guy, which is why things look so nice, and uh, a more experienced uh, back end guy to join me on the coding side. Uh, I also do a lot of work with the uh, the patches and um, build systems involving getting those patches out the door. It may not sound like a lot, but when you think about it, we're in the studio testing things long before they get to you. And that chain of testing and promotion is about eight steps long. So there's a lot of patching to manage there. And that's basically what I do. So how did you first break into the industry and end up here at well, SOS? That is probably my absolute favorite story to tell. Because I love <laughs> telling people that I work in gaming, right? Um, and then they're like, oh, how did you get the job? So my dad works a couple blocks up the road and he'll walk on his lunches. He'll go down, there's a grocery store right down across the street. You can say it, it's Wegmans. It's Wegmans, And it's yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Well, I just, you know. <laughs> so it's Wegmans down the street. And um, he was walking at lunch when I was a junior at college. And he called me up and he said, real quick, send me your resume. I was like, <laughs> All right, why? And he says, well, I was walking and I found this badge, the ID badge, to this person and I looked her up and she works at this company, Zenimax, and I was like, what? <laughs> it what? turns out he found the ID badge for the head of recruiting here at Zenimax back way pre-beta. <laughs> and this was in 2011. Um, so I sent him my resume and she came to uh, pick up the badge, you know, gave her a call, said, hey, I have your badge. She comes to pick up her badge from my father, and, and he's like, oh yeah, my, my son's a gamer, I saw you work in gaming. And she's like, oh God, I have to listen to this guy talk about <laughs> his 12-year-old kid playing COD. And he says, no, actually, you know, he's looking for internships, here's his resume, which of course is a great way to get your foot in the door. So they, they brought me in, it happened to be near spring break, it was like March, so I came back from school with the Penn State. Uh, but I just live across the border here in, um, in the Maryland, and uh, came back, uh, interviewed, uh, it went really well, brought me on for the summer, and, and you know, that's all she wrote. I, I, I was here for the next summer as well, and it went so well that the head of the studio, the big boss uh, firer himself, uh, <laughs> asked if I, he could convince me to stay. And, and I said, uh, yeah, I don't think you'll have too much trouble with it. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to say anything. You know, it's funny, I'm pretty sure I ran into your mom at Bed Bath & Beyond one time years ago, and I was wearing a Zoss sweatshirt, and she was like, oh, do you work at Zenimax? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, oh, my son used to intern there, and he loved it so much. <laughs> <laughs> that and I, like, well, she's, here hopefully you are. she's watching, too. So Aww, I'm hi, out. Mom. <laughs> so, All right. That is an awesome story. Yeah, so that is insane. a very unusual getting into the industry leap. Yeah, well, wow. so it's, it's tough, because like a lot of people ask me, like, oh, you work in gaming, it's so great. Like, how can I get in? It's like, 
every person I've talked to, there's some luck. There's gonna oh, yeah. have mm-hmm. to be some luck. Mm-hmm. But there are ways to set yourself up to do better, to have a better chance. And, and it's basically like this. Game design is tough. Lots of people want to be designers. But the gate for most people in getting into design, I found, has been QA. Like my roommate is a uh, QA tester. He was an intern here, and now he's a uh, full QA tester to another studio. And the idea would be that then he could parlay that experience and some of his freelance design work into a design job. That's tough. You have to do a lot of jumping around and having the right opportunities. I got much luckier because it turns out it's very hard to staff engineers. Yes. Mm. If you can program, it's a good You're bet that there's a game studio <laughs> yeah. somewhere, yeah, that uh, is interested in you. And, and you got to be able to pull your weight. This is not, you know, uh, I, uh, I won't name a bank, but I worked at somewhere at a bank as an intern. <laughs> I did more in my first three weeks here than in three months there. Wow. I'll put it that way. <laughs> um, so you're not going to be sitting around, but it is some of the most entertaining, challenging, uh, fantastic work to do. It's just a matter of getting that luck, getting the foot in the door, and, and having the technical ability. And I actually ran into one of our recruiters earlier, and I would be uh, remiss if I didn't give Rob Ector a shout out. <laughs> and he said that you should email him if you're an engineer and you can program, especially C++. Wow. <laughs> Rob Ector, he told me to say email him. So. If you're a programmer and you can do C++, we're looking for game programmers. He wanted me to transfer to the game side. I said, that's going to be tough. (laughs) Mine Uh, was luck, too, getting in. I don't know if yours was only based on luck. No. Uh, (laughs) It was working up through CS. So you mentioned the the installer. What else have you worked on here at Zoss? Oh, man. So when I first started, um, things were very bare bones. So I started in 2011. And that was right when they were getting started ramping up what's called the platform side. So basically, you could think of the game as being split in two, right? There's the part that you guys have at home that you play. And then there's our back-end stuff, including the website, the account system, all of that. There's a lot that goes into that. Again, it's not something you really think about a lot. But that system, I got to write the very first uh, iteration of that. The very, very first system that allowed you to open the game, log in to an account, have that account be saved with your name and your permissions and your characters, as well as uh, telling you whether or not the realms were up. I actually got to write that. Now, none of that code exists anymore. They wouldn't just leave an intern code, an intern's code in there. That was, you know, like I said, three, four years ago. But um, it was fun because there were so few of us there just getting started. We got to really get in there. And I, I learned so many things, uh, groovy on rails. And, uh, and then what? we got, yeah, it's a language. <laughs> It's a language system. So Ruby on Rails is a, is a pretty uh, uh, I thought you said okay. Groovy. I did, because that's oh. another system. Groovy on Rails is a Java on Rails framework. Oh. And it was the first thing we used. So it's things I've program. never heard of. It sounds like I'm like, oh, throwing out these things. I had never heard of them either. Um, these days, I do most of my work in Python, um, C. I do scripting. I do all kinds of different languages. In fact, I'll do custom like Unix shell scripting. I do Java. The installer is written mostly in Java, if you guys have um, seen that. There's flexibility with learning different languages is, is pretty wow. much a big deal. Programming language, languages. Yeah, so, yeah. Wow. So I, I can't speak Russian or no? anything. No? No, oh, I, I don't. Okay, okay. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yep. <laughs> uh, so what's been like the best day ever? So, oh, that's tough. So there have been a couple of really good days here. Like. I'm not going to lie, like, this is one of those situations where you do a job you love and you're like never really working. It, it's like that. Uh, there are very few days where I'm like, I wake up and I'm like, oh, I don't want to go to work because why wouldn't I? Um, <laughs> we have once a quarter when we put out major releases. We haven't so much lately, but back especially when we were pre-launch, uh, like every quarter on the dot were these big release parties. We put out a, a big release and we would say, look, this is all we did in this quarter. It would be uh, videos of, of everything that's been done, big gatherings of the whole studio. And those were pretty sweet parties. And a lot of those were awesome. Um, you know, our holiday parties are pretty good. But, but what really <laughs> sticks out for me is so... Um, you guys know that like, when a game gets on the shelf, it has to have been sent somewhere to get copied, right? Albums, video games, whatever. It's got to get 
copied and boxed and distributed. So months and months before that happens, and in our case sometime in early, I want to say February, preparing for April launch, we were getting everything ready to be sent out for replication. That's called the mastering process. So it was gold master is what it's called. It's the actual discs that get sent out to be made into the boxes and discs, discs that you guys have at home. That was one of the most adventurous things I have ever done. <laughs> I think I spent four nights at the studio in two weeks of, of working on it. It was right around the Super Bowl, so whatever that was, because I remember I got <laughs> called during the Super Bowl to come Aww. in. I, as a, as a lifetime Ravens fan, yeah. I, uh, I wasn't interested anyway, but, you know, Broncos, whatever. Uh, this, like I said, this was before launch, not this past week. But, um, so I, uh, I got to do some gold mastering, and the, the true adventure there was working with our uh, director of QA, Michael Craighead. Now, he is an industry just giant, and uh, he's been around, you know, in gaming for ages, and worked on a bunch of awesome titles. He carries a lot of respect. He's he's seen as sort of a serious guy around here, but no, I tell you what, <laughs> working with him, you know, it's like two in the morning. We've been there for 12, 16 hours, whatever, and we're just trying to get built and just hanging out with him and hearing his stories of. Yeah, one time I was gold mastering and I got a chair thrown at me by an angry developer who wouldn't listen to me that I said this bug, you know, can't pass. Oh my God. So, <laughs> I, because I, wow. I like, I think to myself as a pretty, I'm young, so I'm very like passionate. I have to get stuff done and very, you know, angry. I have this reputation and, and yet I was like, I feel like I'm an angry dude. And he's like, you haven't thrown anything at me yet. You're fine. Was like, <laughs> that was nice. So to this day, um, Michael Craighead will occasionally call me young hero or something like that, <laughs> just from the you know our, our adventures uh, stuck here overnight with our, just us and our testers and oh man our our old producer Trey Carrington, that guy was just awesome. He was such a character. There's that's another thing about you know here I'll, go ahead ask because I know I did the next question. Anyway. <laughs> ask I dare you. What's your favorite part of the job here? Okay, so I really like the people that I work with. So. Uh, Gina has been around forever. Like uh, we've we've been, you know, working together since the beginning. Uh, back when you were office admin, office manager, office manager, that yeah, was years ago. Now years and years ago, <laughs> when she was office manager, I remember you training like the new office manager, who's our office manager now, and <laughs> um, just all the awesome people. So I play a lot of when we get a chance at lunch, we do tabletop gaming. There's mm -hmm. a regular group, uh, James Lau. And uh, his wife, Mandy, who they just had a new little baby. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> um, so Mandy's not here at the moment, but they're awesome, and we do a lot of gaming. Um, my favorite QA guy who hassles me about stuff being broken, Scott Brenner. Uh, <laughs> my, my partner in Austin who does the install work with me. I said it was a team of three, a front-end guy and somebody with me. Well, that's James Haggerty. He's, he's great. Are you accepting an Oscar? No, I know. I just... <laughs> The people that I work with are fantastic, so that's, that's probably my favorite. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> CJ, just... CJ will actually be at the art thing tonight, right? We're getting you on the show soon. He's been on the he show. He was already on the show. Yeah, yeah. I watched the show with him on it, actually, in preparation for today. So... Libra, I just want to say, somebody said they don't like you, they love you. Yeah. Somebody wants a plush of you, like they are just eating you up. <laughs> That's fantastic. Was that his mom? It was I don't <laughs> my mom. <laughs> my mom would want like a wow. Dwight bobblehead of me. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you already kind of touched on some advice for uh, if people want to get into the industry, basically just find a lost badge, right? Well, yeah, <laughs> so like I said, luck is a huge part of it, but you know, if, if you're into math at all, and you, and you think you have a shot, or maybe even you just worked on a family computer when you were a kid, I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't learn a word of programming until I was a freshman in college. Hmm. All I did was debug the family computer when it broke. I would, you know, fix installations of software, or tell my parents never to use Internet Explorer again. Sorry, <laughs> Internet Exploder again. Uh, things like that. Just, I never tried to program. And then I went to college, and I met you know, my college roommate who had programmed some in high school and through my first semester, you know, C++ course and him and my math background, things eventually sort of clicked. It, it, it took some time, but, you know, you never know what you can do until you, you really try to um, put your skills to work. So, you know, don't be intimidated if you've never programmed before. I, I hadn't, so I just, I went for it and three years later, ended up here. 
And now three years later, even, I'm here on this couch. So. <laughs> That's awesome. So last question, at least from us, what are you currently working on? If you can tell us. Ah, okay. So I can talk a little bit about what I'm working on now. Uh, in fact, this leads to another thing that's pretty cool about uh, working here. So we... <laughs> Is uh, it the snacks? Oh, the snacks are good. <laughs> we got like free food, everything. I gained, Tasty I've snacks. gained like 40 pounds since starting this job. Like, not even kidding. Oh, there's also a free gym, though, which my dad and I work out at three times a week, or else I would probably have gained even more weight. So, um, so what was I got sidetracked? What That's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So Steam is is basically the big push right now. So we went to the Tamriel Un Tamriel Unlimited <laughs> stuff, right? All the new the new branding and the new uh, subscription system and all of that. And one of the things I got to do last week, I believe, uh, when we actually released that, was sit in a war room. And that is as cool as it sounds. And basically, what it is is it's a bunch of uh, developers and directors and producers and people who just can direct the firepower where it needs to go, sitting in and saying, okay, we're gonna push the button to send everything live, go. And then seeing what breaks, right? Obviously things have been tested beforehand, so not a lot breaks, but <laughs> when it cool does, graphs. it feels like, mm. it, yeah, there's a lot of graphs and, and charts and cool stuff like that up there. And then you get to be like, okay, one time right at launch, for example, we broke the entirety of the French language in the installer, or in the launcher, and I got to be like on the sh on the uh, firing, you know, like okay, go. You need to <laughs> fix the French thing, like as fast as you can. Do it. And I managed to get it fixed. I found like a junk character that didn't belong, and people were like, "What? How did you find?" And just it, you feel really good when you can solve an issue that's directly affecting people. And somebody with ten years more experience than you is going, "How did you find this one character that was invisible?" That it, so I'm, <laughs> You're I'm like, "Oh, I'm, I'm just amazing." <laughs> well, that's so. That's another actually. My first boss when I got here, Justin Randall, more Oscar speech exceptions. Someone else I definitely <laughs> need to thank. Justin Randall, another giant in the industry. I, I love that man. I could not be here without him. He was my first boss when I was an intern. He was the one who every time I would get frustrated at a, at a problem and just throw my hands up and say, I, I can't do this, if I could swear here. Uh, but um, he would you know, sit me down and be like, look, you can handle this. Let's work through it. Let's see what's going on. And one day, you know, he was always a big believer in code reviews. And so one day he called me and he was like, he wrote a regular expression, a regex. And he was like, I think this is fine. Just one little line of, you know, slash letter character. And I, he's like, just look at it for me. And I found three bugs in one line. I think he did it on purpose. But I found three bugs in one <laughs> line. And he was like, there you go, man. And so I'll, I'll never forget that. Just him being like, look, Set for life. you can handle it, man. Like, I just, that's, that's the thing, man. You never know. You just, until somebody pushes you to really live up to what you can do. You never quite know what you can do. So it was, that's somebody I need to definitely look after. <laughs> all right, so we have some questions. Uh, well, they all want you to give away your shirt for one. Oh, so I knew, I actually wore this in hopes that people would be like, oh, what is that? It was between this and cat <laughs> bug. So know that all the Pendleton <laughs> Ward fans out there, I almost threw the cat bug, but again, all the weight, it's a little tight. It's a <laughs> <laughs> this is from a place called Turtle Tees, I believe. It just started oh, I've showing up. Shirts there yeah, yeah, it just started showing yeah. up in my Facebook feed one day. I don't know why. Uh, they thought I would like cute shirts, I guess. I think it's Tea Turtle. Right? Tea Turtle, yeah, yeah that's it. Um, and they mostly do like gaming and nerdy themed stuff. This was one of the sort of unthemed ones, but I just, I mean, come it's on, cute. it's a cat. They can't. <laughs> a cat um, bug, and you know. So. so somebody was asking if you get crash reports. I don't think that's mm. you, right? So. I don't get them directly, but what will happen is if something uh, bad is going on. So crash reports from the game are not something that I touch because I'm not I'm not on the game side. Like I said, I'm I'm everything before the game. But when people are having trouble getting into the game, patcher errors, downloading errors, things like that, um, what will happen is Gina will get a bunch of stuff from the forums and flash me an email and say. Dave, we're getting a bunch of errors on live. What's happening? Oh or no, God, I guess God, really, God. Leaper, we're getting a bunch of, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, and I actually there's, forget there's too many Daves. your name is David. Yeah, there's so many Davids <laughs> at the studio, we all go by our last name. So <laughs> I'm Leaper around here. But So I'll get an email from her saying, ah, oh, things are broken on live. And then that's what we go for. So uh, the forums are pretty much the best tool for when you're getting trouble before, right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you can't report it in game. I don't want to like say that in yeah. the social community. It's like, don't say that. <laughs> But okay, the, the forums then is is that's where they'll see it and then send it my way because usually I'm developing, so I'm not looking at the forums. Now, we talked a little bit about this yesterday. How 
players would really love to start downloading patches sooner. Mm -hmm. Right. Is that something that you think we could have sometime um, in the future? If we ask so nicely, can we have? <laughs> that is a technological <laughs> issue. It's due to the uh, the backend vendor we use for our patching solution. Um, it's something that they support, though. It's just to do with uh, where priorities have been as far as getting launch out and then post-launch, getting things stabilized. But it's definitely um, in our what you know backline or backline backlog. I combined, I combined backlog and pipeline. <laughs> Close it, it's in the backlog, which is like a you know it's our pipeline of work. Um, so it, it is something that we're looking at. We'll let you guys know for sure when that's coming. I can't give you a specific time or anything, but it is something we're looking at is, is pre-patching. And then related to that, I know we talked about also is download speeds. So mm. I can actually speak a little bit to that. The number one reason that our download speeds are not as fast as we would like is actually just due to the infrastructure internet backbone that is in the United States. And the reason that I can say that is because I'm willing to bet that our EU people here have an average download speed much faster than our US ones, hmm. due simply to the distribution network and the country they live. So we actually employ two content distribution networks on the back end to distribute patches to you guys. And then a middleman service that takes, uh, when you guys boot up and get a patch and get ready to download, it actually pings out to a URL and says, hey, what is the fastest server available? And it'll query both server sets in your local area and hit one or the other depending on which one will give you the fastest download. So we actually do have a system in place of two, and they're two of the biggest providers of uh, content distribution in the country. So it's, that's just kind of the, the network and the way it stands. These guys aren't exactly capped for bandwidth. It's just the middleman networks they have to run through to get to you guys. This country, the internet. <laughs> It's a, it's a sad time. We, we rank like 16th in internet in the world is like in the United States. Like, really? <laughs> but yeah, that's just, that's how it is, sadly. Um, oh, Erlex, frequent streamer Erlex was asking what your favorite tabletop game is and what ah. you usually play at lunch. Oh, okay. So I believe the game I just started playing with them is called Seven Wonders. And that's pretty fantastic. And that's my favorite. Our number one game at lunch is probably Werewolves, as in Werewolves of Miller's Hollow. Oh, I like that one. We just call it Werewolves. Yeah, that one's fun. But I think I think I like uh, the Seven Wonders more. But I'm kind of a Trekkie. I like both Star Trek, Star Trek and Star Wars, so I won't get into that. But <laughs> uh, I'm kind of a Trekkie, and I do the uh, Star Trek Attack Wing stuff. So I've got a pretty substantial collection of Star Trek uh, Attack Wing. That's probably my favorite. <laughs> it was enough. It was enough of a favorite that I went and bought the stuff myself. So <laughs> that. Uh, with with James Lau, of course. <laughs> uh, Templars of Doom ESO <laughs> is asking um, if you wanted to get into coding, what is the best way to get into it at a beginner level? Mm. So there's a lot of different schools of thought when it comes to that. And I recently read an article that posed a couple of those schools and then one of them lined up with what I think. If I had to do it all over, I wouldn't start with C++. And then I wouldn't transition to Java because they are very, very, very particular, persnickety sort of languages. <laughs> the way I always tell the story is this. If I wrote 100 lines of C++, I would compile it. It would have three error, three bugs, like three compiler bugs or whatever, and then I'd fix those, and there'd be one more, and then there'd be a warning, and then maybe it would work. If I wrote 100 lines of Java, there would be one bug, and then I'd fix it, and it would work. If I wrote 100 lines of Python, a, I'm doing something wrong, but B, <laughs> it would just work, right? Because you, you can do so much in such a, a small amount of time. I would recommend a more obfuscated language. By obfuscated, what I mean is less in touch with the computer memory, less um, down deep in the actual hardware. Like, C++ is not a particularly deep language, but none of the, the memory uh, information is obfuscated from it. You can get and dig into pointers and and uh, get into the back end of whatever structures that you, that you put together. I would recommend starting somewhere simpler. I would say start with Python, start with JavaScript. In fact, there is uh, a lot of really good JavaScript tutorial stuff online. And if you really want to get into what's sort of big right now, I'm hearing a lot of things about Ruby, and I've actually written mm -hmm. some Ruby on Rails and can uh, <coughs> state that, that, yeah, that's pretty easy and it's a pretty decent place to start. I would start somewhere high level would be my best recommendation. I'd say JavaScript, 
personal favorite is Python, but whatever works for you. Before getting into college, is there any like free options for people who want to tinker around with it? Oh, there's a, I mean, there's an absolute ton. Well, I, most of the um, programming language development kits, uh, SDKs, software development kits, and then um, compiling programs and IDEs, uh, uh, development environments, are free to begin with. I mean, uh, NetBeans uh, works with Java, JavaScript, things like that. And then I think there's like add-ons for all kinds of other stuff. Aptana is another free one that you can get that works with Ruby and things like that. Uh, Python itself, that's just free. And you don't need to compile it with anything. You just run it on things. So if you can get yourself a you know SDK of Python, um, in fact, one of the first challenges you can have in learning to work with computer software and computer science and, and, and programming is getting those SDKs set up because that's not easy. You download something and it's like, oh, here, get this, and then it'll work, and then it doesn't, and you have to link things <laughs> in your path and set up how it's compiling, and, and not in the case of um, Python, but it has to know what Python is and things like that. So as far as like free stuff, it's kind of all free. Okay. There's not really mm -hmm. anything you have to pay for until you get into enterprise level mm. um, studios and like you know the Visual Studio subscription that the entirety of Bethesda has and things like that. But mostly it's all free and like um, there's like a, a website I think it's C++ all spelled out like that is 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 one of the websites that I've used and there's a JavaScript one it's like maybe Code Academy. Or, yeah, I've heard of Code Academy. Yeah, but every time I Google for because. Inevitably, I don't remember all the functions for all the languages. Like, oh, give me all the string functions for JavaScript. Like, if I typed string functions as JavaScript into Google, there's a website, and the theming of the website is lime green, and it <laughs> will uh, allow you to code examples on the site live hmm. and then see what they do. And that's what I've used anytime I need to look things up. So you'll know what I mean when you see it. It's, it's just like a lime green. I, I didn't prepare. I didn't no, 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 that's okay. <laughs> but, um, this is all very good for yeah. people who are interested in trying it out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I think that just about wraps it up. So cool. thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, yeah tons hey, of information. I think that was the I most... I hope it wasn't overwhelming like, no, too much. No, I think that was the most exciting explanation of programming and engineering <laughs> I've not, ever heard. Yeah, it's not a very exciting <laughs> subject. That's kind of the problem where it's like, so tell me about the exciting things of gaming. Like, well, I <laughs> program the back end of the launcher. <laughs> so it... <laughs> I, I do what I can though. Um, and just real quick, I know I already said hi, but hi, Ron, love you. And hey, Golden, Aww. if you're watching, what's up, buddy? I, every time you say that, everyone in chat starts saying hi, mom. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again for joining yeah, us. Thank and you. It's uh, good to be sure, we'll have you again sometime. Uh, I'd love to. Well, coming up next, we are going to get into our Ask Us Anything. Oh, we're over here now. We're going <laughs> to get into our Ask Us Anything segment. I guess. Brian cut me off. <laughs> so um, this segment, again, is uh, questions that everyone posted on the forums in the special Ask Us Anything forum mm -hmm. thread. Uh, we've pulled out a few questions for this week, and now we're going to answer them. So the first question is from Kura Gregui. You guys with your names. Your names. <laughs> uh, well, they were asking, uh, where will we be able to buy subscriptions and crowns for console? Hmm. Will we be able to buy from PSN and Xbox Live or only from Zoss? Will we be able to get console subs at launch or sometime after? Uh, well, the PS4 and Xbox One versions of the game are going to be fully integrated console experiences. So uh, this includes utilizing the PlayStation Store and the Xbox Marketplace for the sale of ESO Plus memberships and crowns. And these will all be available at launch June 9th. Awesome. <laughs> all right, this next one is from Anna Zazi. Can we please see a VR 14 version of the Soul Shine set? So one of the gameplay team's primary focuses will be creating new sets, as well as creating high-level versions of some of the older sets. It is something they are working on now. This list isn't 100% finalized yet, but we do plan on giving players lots of cool op options for high-level play. All right, the next question is from uh, 
Kiani Meyer asking, um, oh man, I keep saying um. We People talked are about drinking, this beforehand. Aren't they? That's that's the secret word. <laughs> I said it was going to be dangerous. <laughs> anyway, uh, this question is: Will there be an option to allow other players to ride your mount with you? Hmm. Um, our current mounts are really. <laughs> <laughs> all the guys are giggling They're behind all giggling the screen. In the back. <laughs> <laughs> um, our current mounts are built to accommodate only one player. I can't even say this with a straight face now. Uh, and we don't actually have any plans to support additional riders at this time. Thank you, Wheeler. Not my fault. <laughs> this next question is from Ash Tall. We're all aware that for a normal player playing a few hours a week, Alliance ranks take years to get. Can we make them account wide so players who, can, who play alts are not forced to take the same character every day because otherwise their ranks are split across multiple characters and they're at a disadvantage? We mentioned last time that alliance ranks are meant to take a long time to level. However, the idea of making them account wide is something we're investigating. It will require some time to implement though if we decide to go that route. All right, this question is from Nazir. Um, by drop rate, what is the rarest possible item in the entire game? Hmm. Well, it is the full Dwemer racial motive style motive. Did I really motif? just say that motif? <laughs> <laughs> motif style book titled Racial Motifs 15 Dwemer. Um, not the individual chapters, but the single book that teaches you all of the chapter knowledge at once. So it does exist, but it's very, very rare. That makes sense. I don't think I've ever seen that for sale in mm -hmm. any guild <laughs> store Now ever. everyone's going to be looking for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this next question is by Shadow. Is there any hope in getting the time spent in werewolf form looked at? I don't just mean for staying in combat to sustain it. I mean turning the ultimate into a toggle and allowing us to transform at will and remain in wolf form while outside of combat, running around Tamriel, turning in quests and exploring, looting while still being able to remain in beast form. We're currently pretty happy with how the werewolf is, is playing based on improvements from update one point, well, actually, up, up, update 6. Yeah, update six. Yep. Notably, the fact that Blood Rage passive allows you to stay in werewolf form for a very long time while being active in combat and taking damage. But that said, we will definitely continue to evaluate the gameplay of the werewolf and consider all suggestions. This next question is from Timid, Ob Timid Observer asking, with the changes in update six to stat caps, much of the end game, end game gear and crafted gear feels useless. Are you planning to rebalance gear in order to address this? Well, the overall goal for end game gear is that you use it to customize your play style. Um, some players want to focus on higher regeneration so they can cast a lot of expensive abilities, whereas others really want to have strong blocks or deal high fire damage. Um, in the future, we will iterate on sets uh, to make sure that their power levels achieve these goals. That's a good answer. Thank you. This one's by <laughs> Thuster. When playing around with alchemy, I couldn't help but notice that it would be very convenient with an in-game notebook where you could write down recipes, things to remember, maybe the possibility to write down lore from your adventures and let other players read them in some way. Maybe in a bookshop where you could sell and buy books. So we love this idea, we, we think it's really cool, uh, but we don't currently have any plans for this type of edition. But still, anytime you come up with a cool idea like this, we'd, we'd love to hear it, share it on the forums, let the community talk about it. You never know. This question is from Saucy Jack. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of sauce? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Um, is it possible to have super rare loot or trophies that could be found either from chests, safe boxes, or pickpocketing that give actual bonuses not available anywhere else to players for having them in inventory? It would incentivize the players to do something more than just grind mobs. Uh, we currently do have monster and fishing trophies that are rare drops that you can collect, um, and we'd kind of like to expand that system to allow for more scavenger hunting style gameplay. Uh, but we don't really have any plans for them to provide direct character bonuses. Okay. This next question is by Wenzu 222B16 underscore ESO. I think he missed a two. Oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Could you please give careful consideration to increasing the limit on the number of players allowed in one guild? 
We do get this question a lot too. Um, the limit feels too small given the large influx of recent new players that are looking for an established guild to join. The 500 player cap is actually a result of both design and technical constraints as uh, the larger the guild is, the more data is sent out across its members constantly and it becomes a bit more unwieldy when that happens, the larger the numbers. We don't currently have any plans to increase the guild size, but we do encourage you to join multiple guilds to help expand your inner social circles. Here's a question from Logical, I don't know it's, if fuel? it's supposed to be fool or fuel. fuel. Either way, <laughs> um, he was asking, would you please start adding an estimated time of return for servers when you do maintenance? Hmm. This is something we hear a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, sure. Uh, we'll start adding an estimated time when the servers come back up online from maintenance. Um, but please understand that this is only going to be an estimate. And mm -hmm. things happen that are out of our control. But we will start doing that. Okay. That was an easy answer. It was. This one's and it by... was a positive one. Yep. <laughs> Next one is by Khmer Shadow. Will werewolf berserkers ever get a change in fur colors to differentiate from non-morphed werewolves? This is another one of those ideas that we really like, uh, but we currently don't have any plans for werewolf color variations. Here's one from Greeny Wolf B17 underscore ESO asking, why is it most people that have played since beta got 4,700 to 5,000 crowns and I only got 3,200? Well, um, a small number of users didn't actually receive the correct amount of crowns when we initially deployed them at the start of Tamriel Unlimited last week. Was that last week? Mm -hmm. I think it was, right? Yeah, the 17th. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's been um, a long week. <laughs> yeah. um, we have since resolved that issue, so you should have the correct amount of crowns now. Um, in case you were wondering, um, when we did that whole um, crown deploy last week, uh, you would have gotten 500 crowns for just owning the game, and then 100 crowns for every month previously subscribed, and 1,500 crowns for every month remaining on your subscription. So, there's a little math for you. Yep. This one is by Randolph Benoit. Why no children in the game? Feels unreal. Un excuse me. Feels unreal only adults and chickens everywhere. I think there's pigs and cows too, right? <laughs> so... For this one, we are a bit sworn to secrecy, but Hermaeus Mora knows. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this question is from uh, Arate RN. We're going with that. Um, while somewhat discouraged, solo players do still exist in this game. As the lone wolves or men and myrrh of Tamriel, we miss out on much, I'll bite by choice, and it has now been confirmed that in the most recent patch notes, we have been intentionally deprived of the benefits of ultimate synergies. When no other player is present, is it really necessary for solo players to be unable to activate the synergy on an ultimate they have earned? Well, synergies are rewards for players working together. Uh, the great part about our slotting system is you can have a wide variety of options available to customize your playstyle. Um, some ultimates are better for group play, like Consuming Darkness, because it protects all of your allies and gives them a synergy. Ultimates like Deathstroke are better for solo play, because mm -hmm. it only increases the ability caster's damage. And this is our last question. This one is by Peterus. Do you plan on adding more evil choices to quests, and especially main zone chains, since they can't be skipped? It feels weird to play a criminal and go around helping and saving people. <laughs> Dark side choices. Uh, we try not to have any overtly good or evil choices in the game, um, especially when we put in a choice in quests. Elder Scrolls is much more about morally ambiguous, the gray area in between good and evil. And that is it. That there wraps up it. our Q&A. So next up, um, we're actually going to have a giveaway. Another giveaway. So this one is going to be for one of the Alliance hoodies, um, the Altmer, the Breton, or the Nord. We do currently have medium, large, and extra large. So please keep that in mind when you're entering. We're going to be really clever today. The key word to enter is going to be hoodie. Ooh, creative. <laughs> hoodie. Um, 
while everyone's kind of going crazy in chat typing hoodie, um, there were some questions about who to email uh, your resume to that David Leeper mentioned. It's oh. Rob Eckner, and his last name is spelled E C H T E R. So you want to email uh, Rob Eckner at Zenimaxonline com if you know programming or computer science. Shoot him your resume. I know there are a couple of people in chat like, I know computer science. Who do Ooh, I email? <laughs> that's exciting. Yes. Uh, so again, we're doing a hoodie giveaway. Type in hoodie. Everyone's going crazy. I, I just saw somebody try and type in his email, but this is not a good time. Oh, <laughs> yeah, not, not in chat, please. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have a winner. Again, remember, we only have medium, large, and extra large. Uh, the winner is Quiet Fifty U L. Congrats, Quiet. <laughs> so Quiet Fifty U L. Jason will be in touch with you on Twitch. You will have your choice of one of these three lovely hoodies. Mm -hmm. And that's it. All right. So next up, we're going to go over some ESO community events, things that you can do over the next week in game that your fellow players are hosting. All right, so every week some of our ESO community runs in-game events. These are largely associated with the Roleplay Guilds and community, which we have a wonderful one in this game. And we've got some new and recurring offerings to show you this week. So let's take a look. So this is the Commemoration Masquerade. This is for all Mary Dominion members on the North American Mega Server. It's this Saturday, March 28th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time at the Falmore Headquarters Terrace in Woodhearth. Woodhearth is actually a place where a lot of the role play events for Alt Mary Dominion on North American Mega Server happen. Uh, next, we have the second tournament of the champions. When was the first one? I'm not sure. Well, this one is going to be Saturday, March 28th, and also Sunday, March 29th at 9 p.m. CEST. This is going to be on the Children campaign over in Cyrodiil on the European Mega Server. So if you are a PvP lover, you are encouraged to meet for two evenings for some massive confrontations. Next up is the Player Live Auction. This is a long-running event that happens every Saturday. This one's next one is March 28th and then April 4th at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. This is run by the Blue Skuma Company. And this is in Marbrook in Greenshade for Alt Mary Dominion members on the North American Mega Server. Next, we have the ESO Fashion Carnival. This is um, a new role play event. We actually found it on our forums. Sounds um, like a lot of fun. They're putting a lot of work into it. They definitely are. They have models and photographers. It's going to be this <laughs> whole huge thing. Um, it's going to be this Sunday, March 29th, around 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, it's going to be on the European, oh, sorry, geez, I can't read, the North American mega server. Uh, the location is still TBD, but it will be Ebenhart packed. And this is our final event, I believe. This is the Tavern Night for New or Shy RPers. So if you've always wanted to get into role playing or you're one of those lurkers who hangs back and <laughs> watches the role play events, we know who you are. You want to say hi? This is the perfect event for you. This one's on Monday, March 30th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time in Fells Run Inn. This, that's for Daggerfall Covenant members on the North American Mega Server. This oh. is the last one. I lied. <laughs> the day that never was. Oh, man. There's I lied, two more. too. There's more. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, this is going to be Wednesday, April 1st at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time um, in Ebenhart City for North American Mega Server players. Uh, if you have any questions about that, you can contact the Human Floyd, who we actually spoke with a few shows ago. Mm -hmm. He runs a lot of events. Yes, he does. <laughs> This is one for our miscellaneous Valenwood events. So different role play events will take place as part of this new series of events for Alt Mary Dominion members. First up, they're going to have a Guar race. I've got to see that. Wow. This one's on Wednesday, April 1st. I hope this is actually a thing and they're not just trolling us for April 1st. I know. 
<laughs> this one happens at 10 p.m. Eastern Time and every Monday and Wednesday at 10 p.m. in Valenwood, which again is for all Mary Dominion members, and this is on the North American Mega Server. Unofficial Tavern Night. Uh, this is another one that's been pretty long running. Uh, it's Tuesdays. There's another one April 3rd at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time on the North American Mega Server. This is for Daggerfall Covenant players. So you should attend so you can chat, drink, and, and flirt. Well, you know, if you're drinking, players. the flirting comes in hand, right? This is true. <laughs> well, that just about wraps up the show, so thanks for joining us. Oh, just kidding. You probably want the Alliance for <laughs> Q&A, don't you? <laughs> well, that is coming up <laughs> next. I know. It's roll -a -roll. <laughs> uh, the Q&A with Brian Wheeler is coming up next. Is gold. All right. So, hi, Brian. I'm sorry, I was looking at the thing. <laughs> I couldn't resist. So, here's Brian Wheeler, our lead PvP designer, here hi. to answer some questions. You ready? Hi, guys. So, hi. real quick, why don't you go over <laughs> what you are in charge of? I know sometimes there's a lot of misconceptions about mm -hmm. what you can and and can't can't change. What I am in charge of and not in charge of. Yeah. Right. Um, basically, anything involved with the serial warfare in terms of the campaigns, with keeps, mm -hmm. uh, with siege warfare, with uh, scoring, um, with basically anything involved with the fighting in there except for uh, player abilities and how combat actually functions. Kind of the best way I word it is uh, if you're familiar with, uh, let's say, baseball, for example. <laughs> I like the Orioles. I, can't I think you're familiar. Um, I handle, you know, three Three, uh, three strikes and you're out, four balls, get a walk. Mm -hmm. Those kind of rules, there's four bases. But I don't handle that you can throw a 100 mile an hour fastball. Right. So okay. that's kind of the easy way to describe <laughs> what I do. Oh, uh, let's see. So oh, okay. we will be taking uh, some questions from chat. Uh, we also pulled a lot of questions from the forums. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have my document open. So we have a few <laughs> selections, um, as Gina mentioned, that we're going to go over, and after that we'll see what we've got in chat. But I know the big elephant in the room is, well, one of them, <laughs> is, is, is Imperial City. Mm -hmm. I know we can't talk too much about it, but what can you tell us right now? Uh, so Imperial City, um, I know there's a wonderful video on the internet about it, <laughs> but uh, I can say that it's been in development. Mm -hmm. It's been in development for a while, and one of the good things about ESO is that it's an MMO that progresses and evolves. So, uh, with that progression, we've added uh, champion levels, we've added new gear, we've added uh, Craglorn, new things to do, and Imperial City has to evolve to keep up with that and give a new experience altogether. Right. Uh, so that's kind of why it's gone through several iterations internally, and we've tested it over and over, and we've seen well we can add this to it or we can add that to it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why it's taken a while. Uh, making those things isn't uh, quick and easy to do changes like that. People have data mined mm -hmm. some of it already. Yeah, yeah people have found some things, um, and it's, it's fine. But uh, what you have data mined may not be what you see in the final product. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we're, we're still fine tuning it. We're still adding more to it, figuring out all the experiences we want in there to make it uh, worthwhile. Cool. I think so we can probably tease like a little, a little piece of art sure. from Imperial City. Yeah. Yes? Maybe. Brian? <laughs> there it is. Look at that. <laughs> so that's kind of uh, one of the inside views of a district. Uh, the wall on the, well, the taller wall on the inside is sort of the inner wall that would go to White Gold Tower if you're looking mm. down an alleyway. Mm -hmm. um, this is sort of the feel we're going for in there. Uh, yeah. It kind of reminds me of Cold Harbor. Yeah, mm. Cold, Cold Harbor. I mean, the big anchors there. You yeah, see it when you're yeah. in So, yeah, sort of the whole... Cold Harbor, bad feel, bad things are happening in Imperial City, mm -hmm. and you go handle it. Cool. <laughs> we'll talk more about that later. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Not later today, later, later. Later, later. All right, so the first question we have is from Dovahkiin himself. Mm. Ooh. He is asking, siege damage, intended or not? Intended, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's supposed to hit hard. Um, we... In line with kind of what Paul was talking about of wanting players to spread out, and with sort of the Zerg Buster thoughts that have come out recently. Uh, we want a siege to hurt 
again. Not only because you know it helps break people up and kill them and make them have to respawn, but also it gets back to the war. Um, mm -hmm. That's the bigger aspect of Cyrodiil. It's a war. It's not uh, a huge battleground. It's not a small place where you go, well, people fight on the bridges like crazy and that's awesome too. But it's not a. It's not meant to be a battleground style uh, experience. It's meant mm -hmm. to be a war. Um, that being said, the siege damage for a while had been kind of toned down. It didn't really catch up with uh, the veteran ranks that had been increased, the gear that had been introduced. Mm -hmm. Champion so, system. Yeah, and champion system. So that being said, uh, it's not supposed to hit as hard as it does. I know that uh, you mentioned this earlier. Uh, I got a little my little book, which uh, <laughs> Eric. Uh, Robel and Gang did a quick change of some things to make it so that these abilities don't affect uh, Siege Weaponry come the next patch, So, which which basically means this weekend people are going to go wild using these. Uh, <laughs> yeah. but things like, you know, Standard of Might, Combat Prayer, uh, Elemental Expert, yeah. these, these abilities which increase damage uh, as a whole, they weren't supposed to increase damage 80 meters away. Mm -hmm. They were supposed to increase damage right here. Uh, where the fight is happening between players, so and last they've done we heard, uh, last we heard, those are still in testing. So it mm -hmm. might be this patch, might be the next one. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So it's supposed to hit hard, but not as hard as some of the numbers. Not that like we've yeah, been 50k seeing. damage. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this question is by Eldarth. Um, can you tell us anything specific? about the lag investigation. So mm -hmm. that's yeah. another big one. Is <laughs> yeah. latency, there's lag? Um, game there's, performance. There's lag? I want to say there's lag. I think there's lag. Uh, but that would be I might have heard. I know everybody's pitchforking yeah. and torturing me on Twitch. But um, <laughs> there's, there's several things that we're looking at. There's the performance of your client. You know, uh, when I say your client, you know your computer. Whether you're hitching there with a bunch of spell effects going off, or whether you're standing still and then you snap to one location, mm. uh, or when you're sitting there, you're you know whacking away like crazy, nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. um, all three of those are issues that we're trying to handle and cover. And uh, a lot of the videos that have yep. been getting posted recently have mm. helped out. Um, our engineers are doing what they can to dig through these mm -hmm. uh, the videos to see what's going on. We have a graph that we look at pretty much every day that gives us frame rate spikes. And when I say uh, frame rate, I mean uh, how many how many messages the server is handling in any given you know frame. Mm -hmm. um, and we see those spikes, and when they spike really high, we know that there's a lag spike, and that that's something we need to fix. Um, that being said, we have identified some things recently uh, mm -hmm. that shouldn't have been causing some extra uh, messages to the server. Uh, things with uh, Caltrips was going a little bit crazy with mm -hmm. line of sight checks, mm -hmm. uh, so that's going to be addressed on Monday. And there's some other things where Meteor was proccing a little bit more than it should have from a certain set. Right. Uh, Eric has done a good job finding that and narrowing that down and getting mm -hmm. it so that you might not see Meteor flying off as much as it has. I'm not saying Meteor's the issue. I'm saying that there are tons and tons and tons of things that the guys need to find, mm -hmm. and that's just a few of them that we're finding every week. Uh, something else that we've been seeing a lot of is population imbalances. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about that? That's population imbalance doesn't <laughs> exist. Well, so, so it exists as populations going up and populations coming down. Obviously, lately with uh, Tamriel Unlimited, mm -hmm. the the queues are are back up. Yep. Um, and we we are aware of the queues as well. Um, but during the prime times, population imbalance isn't so big of a worry but it's when it's starting to wane off of prime time or lead mm -hmm. up towards it. That's when things get a little rough. Um, I've looked at maybe adjusting the, uh, the scoring imbalance bonuses and the population imbalance bonuses. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, right now they pull a little bit slow. Uh, they usually go once every hour or once every two hours. Um, we're looking at maybe speeding that up to kind of give the imbalance um, a better chance to catch up. Because I know that some people uh, have posted that the imbalance system doesn't seem to work. Mm -hmm. It's just that, you know, when you get the imbalance bonus, it has to last for a little while for you to be able to catch up. So that duration for how long it lasts may be a bit too long. So we're looking to shorten that up. Um, plus, there's been more radical ideas uh, recently proposed. Things like uh, changing the scoring right. would adjust some of that or <laughs> removing scoring entirely. Mm. Um, now, granted, that doesn't fix the the minute-to-minute -minute fighting of, you know, there's just three of us versus 50, insert alliance name here, mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to get favorites, <laughs> but um, we know that that's an issue too, uh, and, and trying to come up with ways to combat that, like the siege weaponry has been one of them to try and help with that for the time mm -hmm. being. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
This question is by Squisha. Um, can we have it so PvP bonuses only apply to PvP, not PvE? Why do players that do not PvP get to assign themselves to a buff server and benefit? A campaign? Not a, yeah, I know yeah, everybody calls yeah. it a buff server. <laughs> yeah. um, one of the original goals for ESO was to give you a sense that you're part of a greater war. Uh, while you're running around in Auradin, you still know that there's buddies fighting for you in Cyrodiil. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason of getting the bonuses from your friends helping out in the war was to kind of gel everybody together. Right. Uh, that's in the ideal world, but in reality, uh, you guys have noted that there's the buff servers, which have started to wane a little bit with uh, the influx of players. I know the scoring and the current uh, footholds that guilds have on various campaigns is still retaining that. Um, but we can shut it off, uh, but it would look a little weird on the UI right now. Mm -hmm. um, we would need some more time to get it to actually display if it's only a PvP bonus, that when you look at the bonuses window, it just shows you that it's active while you're in Cyrodiil. Mm -hmm. uh, if we did it right now, it would still give you the impression that you're getting the bonuses while you're running around it in might PvE might be confusing. Land. Yeah, and I mean, if, if anything, we want to make sure that the UI is as clear as it can possibly be when it comes to what bonuses you're getting from right. Cyrodiil. Okay. Uh, here's one from Giyudem asking, are you... <laughs> I know. <laughs> Are you planning to reopen more campaigns with the influx of new players? Mm. Right. Um, right now, we're looking at the uh, the total queues across you know Europe and the U.S. separately, mm -hmm. uh, and then within individual campaigns. And when they get to a certain point where it makes uh, Matt or Paul go. Oh my God! We need to open them up right now, or yeah. else we're going to come kill you. Uh, we'll open them up. Uh, it hasn't gotten to the point where it's deemed as ridiculously, oh my god, we need to open them, because opening up more campaigns is great for relieving a pressure valve right now, but we don't want to run into the case where we add another campaign that people could just use as a buff server. Mm -hmm. So it's not just simply adding, here's another campaign. There's some other things we would need to do, like making the buffs only be in PvP only, to kind of discourage some of that, let's treat this new campaign as a buff campaign. So, I mean, while I know that the queues are, are starting to rise a bit in Thornblade, um, we are aware that we can do other things to help alleviate that along with opening up another campaign. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm saying we're doing right now, but we're looking. Mm -hmm. Okay. This question is from Cody. What about new siege engines, ladders and the like? <laughs> ladders and the like. Chad uh, is asking that too, like stuff that they've seen engines? in the trailers mm -hmm. or like scaling walls. Oh, that blur trailer. <laughs> 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 so uh, first time I saw that blur trailer, um, one, of the, one of the guys I know at Bethesda, Eric, he showed it to me. I went, that's cool, but you know we can't do flying bridges and all this stuff. <laughs> but um, what we can do, we can, we can add uh, new weaponry, new ammo, and new ammo. I, did you talk about that earlier? Mm -mm. Okay, so um, <laughs> there may be new ammo coming into the game. That is, would See? be Cold Harbor-y <laughs> in cool. the theme. Um, but new weapons like, uh, I know people have asked for siege towers that you wheel into place. Mm. Um, yeah, or, or something that allows you to scale walls. Yeah, yeah. scale walls. We've talked, uh, a long time ago we had the idea of the Batman grappling hook where you shoot right up. Mm -hmm. um, that still has some possibilities to do because that kind of echoes a little bit to those shooty bridges, but not all the way. Um, but things where they're um, moving collision or collision that appears, uh, there's a lot of things that Cyril has to watch, keep track of, you know, the, the key pieces, the player abilities, the monsters, the guards, mm -hmm. um, trying to keep track of all that, and then adding in moving physics or moving collision uh, would make the lead programmer want to punch me in the head. <laughs> so some of those things we don't do um, because it's a little bit more stress than uh, would be able to handle with what's already happening with the physics out there. Mm -hmm. um, so thing, this is kind of a reason why rams uh, in Siege Weaponry don't have collision already. Because not only moving collision would be a major stress, but also the fact of a door breaks down, I drop a ram, and now you can't get in. Right. So, I mean, friendly right. orfo, that would be a big problem. So. Mm -hmm. uh, well, here's one from Etaniel asking, do you have plans to add other capturable objectives to the map? Yeah, we've thought about adding um, what we nicknamed floating objectives, like um, what people are familiar with in, in battleground games or arena games like CTF, uh, murder ball, multi ball, adding those possibly in the towns. Um, mm -hmm. We had talked about doing that a while ago. 
Um, there have been some complications in doing that because simply adding a new flag out there isn't as easy as it sounds. Because right. <laughs> right now everything is attached to either a keep or a resource or a, a scroll temple. Having, let's say, an Elder Scroll out in the wild that can just roam freely um, is a little bit of code time and tech work in UI that we need to get in there to work. But it would be cool to add in, you know, a CTF match in the Hall. That's the, the space is built perfectly for mm -hmm. that. It's divided mm -hmm. in two. Um, and then maybe adding, uh, sort of sort of bringing back an idea of murder ball, but not, you know, I'm running around with a beam on me, but <laughs> I have, I have uh, like Oriole's bow, therefore I hit people like a Mack truck, but oh, if you yeah. kill me, the bow <laughs> drops and, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. that, that's some ideas that we've thought about. Um, it would be cool to get those in. I can't guarantee that they would get in, but uh, we, we've talked about adding more into Serial, yeah. Cool. This one's from Cree Havoc. Has the PvP team considered experimenting with new campaigns that have different rule sets to others, similar to how Blackwater Blade has the rule of being non-veteran only? Non -vet, yeah. uh, at one point, we did have the veteran only campaign, mm -hmm. um, and this was also when we were dealing with uh, condensing the campaigns and the population. Um, the the problem with having some of these specialized rule sets is that the population isn't there to fill it. Um, we already divide uh, the population in three mm -hmm. with the different alliances. Um, and then we already have another division right now with veteran and non-veteran uh, players, the veteran players not being able to go into the non-veteran campaigns. But that's not stopping the non-veteran players from going into the other campaigns. Right. So it starts to get into a, a sheer simple mathematical situation where, well, if all the veterans want to fight each other, they could go in there and fight each other, but we saw that it really didn't happen that much. Mm. So while the idea was great, um, there are some other things we thought about where we make one campaign, uh, scrolls are the only thing that count for scoring. Mm. Or we do another campaign where just resources count for scoring. So we've thought about some scoring ideas, but in terms of uh, population separation, we kind of learned the lesson that there's non-vet is good, and letting everybody else jump into the pool and other types of campaigns is good, but adding more uh, splits is a bad idea. So mm -hmm. if we did anything else, it would probably be more like scoring changes or different types of gameplay modes that anybody can play. Okay. This would be fun. That would yeah. be crazy. Yeah, be awesome. <laughs> um, another one from Cry Havoc. Um, has the PvP team considered experimenting with, oh my gosh, I just... You just read that. Yeah, we I, have. I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> we did. I totally we highlighted the that. wrong words. Oh, reading. <laughs> All right. Just kidding. Here's the real one. Uh, collisions in Cyrodiil. What do you think about them from a technical point of view and for PvP opportunities? We kind of talked about a little bit um, just a minute ago, but collision always sounds great. It always sounds awesome, mm. uh, but then you have to deal with your your friends blocking your way, or the mm. enemies that you don't want to. You're trying to target the guy behind you, and he's blocking your way, or a siege weapon is blocking your way. I mean, sure, you could do some things where you push against it for maybe five seconds, and then you go through. Um, and the idea of rank and file always sounds cool, but all it takes is one guy to run up and act like a wrecking ball and hit a knockback, and then that goes away. <laughs> so I mean, it, it always sounds cool. And I've played in games where collision is there, and it's, it's fun. But uh, I think in the, the war aspect of Cyrodiil, of trying to have siege weaponry make, uh, make a difference and have players fighting over keeps and with destructible walls, sometimes collision uh, will be, again, a bit much that the server needs to deal with handling. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds cool, but That sort I of think, thing could negatively impact performance, Yeah, it could, right? it could negatively impact performance for sure. Mm. Okay. All right, this is from Luna Ray. What are your thoughts on arenas? Mm. I understand Zoss is against the idea of breaking apart the PvP community between Cyrodiil and other PvP, PvP zones, but have you looked into how to break apart the exciting elements of arenas and how they could be implemented into Cyrodiil? Imperial City is exciting, and in this regard, for me, it looks like a new element to Cyrodiil, so I'm hoping it's one step closer to seeing something closer to arenas for PvPers in ESL. Well, uh, I like the idea of having um, sp sport-style matches like CTF, mm -hmm. uh, like, like multi-ball. Um, we've talked a little bit about putting those maybe into Cyrodiil. Uh, having short duration, maybe 15-20 minute battles would be cool to add in there. It would give everybody um, a fix, you know. I just I have 15 minutes before I get I get dinner finished. I go over there, I play a game real quick, 
come back out. Because mm -hmm. in Cyrodiil, it takes a while to get to a fight. Um, again, that's part of the fact that it's a war. But it would be good to add something like this for giving um, a short term, short fix, get a little bit of uh, alliance points, progress your character, hop back out, go do what you have to do in, in the real world because we all know that's uh, not, not a lot of time can be spared towards mm -hmm. gaming for everybody. Um, that being said, uh, the thought of Imperial City have a, a different feel. There'll be a different feel to Imperial City than Cyrodiil for sure, um, but um, it's not going to be battlegroundy in that type of sport sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, here's a question from Luna Ray. What? No. I'm just kidding. You're on a roll today. I know. It's Friday. Uh, Lone Pirate asking, are there any plans to mix up the design of keeps, such as putting the flags on different levels, changing the layout of keeps, replacing the flags with powerful NPCs? Uh, we toyed around with putting the, uh, the flag inside towers at resources. We toyed around with um, putting flags on every corner or our uh, bastion, as it's mm -hmm. technically called, at a keep. Um, we've toyed with putting one of the flags uh, when you're going up the ramps, <clears throat> and that's in that third-ish level, mm, yeah. all the way in the roof. Uh, we've toyed around with that, but a lot of those we haven't done just yet. Um, play testing that is a bit of a trick because we need to get um, all of the keeps to do that at once. Because if you see one that's a favorite, everybody's like, well, that's a play style I'll just do. Um, but yeah, there have been considerations of moving the flags around. Uh, the most recent uh, into towers has been one. Uh, we can't move it on the roof because the roof, the whole thing collapses. So if we moved it anywhere, we would move it into just the lower portion. Um, and then if we did that, we'd probably have to get rid of the door on the towers. But hmm. um, it, it, it's some ideas of moving the flags around now, changing the architecture of a keep. Uh, that we wouldn't be able to do that for a long time. It takes, takes a lot of artists to build those keeps. Um, not only just the fact of just building them so they stand and look cool, but having them go through all the destructible states that they have to go through that right. takes, mm -hmm. takes a long time for Animations, those guys to do it. lighting. Yeah. Right. It looks great. The, everything that they've, the, the art team and the effects team have done, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's amazing. and it's, It gets you that, that feeling of when you're watching uh, an old school siege movie and you see a fireball come in and hit the wall and it crumbles and the dust mm -hmm. flies. It's like, perfect. <laughs> but it took a long time to get that way. <coughs> okay. This is by Jay Torres. Um, how can we, as players, help you to improve things? There are many of us out there that witness glitches, lag, exploits, and so on. What is the best method to put information in your hands to ensure that you can address issues rapidly? Um, well, first and foremost, the, the forum posts mm -hmm. are great. Uh, seeing information directly, not only just for the Alliance War, but uh, for the combat team. Uh, Robo gets a lot of good information from that too. Yep. Um, videos of this is the, the lag that I'm experiencing, or this is the performance issue I'm experiencing, or this is when everybody was standing still and we all shot around. Like Those videos are good because it gives our engineers a, 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 a window about what's going on right then and there um, because we can't those guys can't be online all the time watching what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, but watching those videos gives them an opportunity to reproduce it internally. And if we can reproduce what those issues are, then we can try nailing down what's going on. Um, other, other things regarding um, the E word you said. Uh, <laughs> exploits. Players can appeal in game. Yep. Uh, call out the players that you see. Call out the behavior that they're doing. Um, we will do what we can to find them and reproduce whatever they're doing uh, on our end in terms of developers, like uh, the gate jumping. Uh, I have something coming in for that later, uh, not not in recent patches, but it'll be coming in later to keep mm -hmm. the scrolls uh, more intact and safe. But things where um, people seem to have perpetual um, shields and health, mm -hmm. uh, videoing that and giving them to us and letting Eric look at it and letting me look at it and letting our, our uh, engineers look at it is one of the best ways that we can nail that down and find out if there's uh, an exploit or just a loophole. Yep. Okay. So, can we just clarify, this is not pre-recorded. We are live. <laughs> oh, yeah. For everybody wondering. <laughs> oh, is, it, is this pre-recorded? Some people mm. think it is. Oh. Yeah. Oh, um, is it because the Q&A you did with Tesla Nation, we did pre-record? Oh, yeah. yeah Out of necessity to do that, uh -huh. yes. But this is a live show. Uh -huh. um, speaking of that Q&A that you did, uh, there's a little bit of confusion about 
um, plans to make Emperor sellable? <laughs> Did you want to just clarify oh, that real yeah, quick? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, that was a discussion of what could we do versus, you know, like in the fairy tale end of, hey, ideas that you guys have talked about. Mm -hmm. What's, ideas what's that realistic? Seen, right. suggested. What's yeah. realistic? What can be done right, like, right now? Um, what would be complete system reworks? Um, some of the ideas that were mentioned in that were, you know, these are things we have thought about in the past, but we didn't implement. These are ways that we could change things right now. And I know that uh, ditching leaderboards is one of the things that people were concerned about mm -hmm. happening if we made any changes. And um, we wouldn't change that aspect mm -hmm. because that's kind of core to what it is right now. Um, if we change the Emperor's system, it would be changed wholesale, but leaderboards would still stay intact because right. people like to see their, their names on top of mm -hmm. the list. Um, so we wouldn't get rid of that. I mean, there's leaderboards for doing uh, other aspects of the game. Yeah. Right? So mm -hmm. There's no point in saying, well, the leaderboards for PvP are now gone too. Um, so we keep that, don't don't worry. And we're not trying to <laughs> sell Emperor's ship. I know that the Crown Store makes people conspiracy theory like crazy, like we took the camps away because we're gonna sell them on the store. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh, what else do we have here? I'm kind of trying to just go through uh, mm -hmm. some questions from chat. Um, somebody was asking if we would ever see PvP in Dragonstar Arena or even open world PvP, just mm -hmm. anything outside of Cyrodiil? Uh, there have been talks about that at one point, but uh, not, not in the cards right now. Everybody wants to keep the, the PvP focused in uh, Cyrodiil, in its caves, mm -hmm. and in Imperial City. Okay. I think we had one more question written down here. Oh, sure. Um, it's by Moiser. Um, so there's not much of a limit to human creativity, so I'm guessing players manage to surprise devs on more than one occasion. In PvP, what are some of your biggest WTF, what are they doing <laughs> moments, um, either during beta or after? That's a great question. <laughs> I, know. I, know. I wouldn't call it a, what are they doing, but it was a, oh, that's, that's clever. Um, <laughs> And it was it was a it was a while ago, but it was really fun watching this and participating in it when a scroll uh, got boosted from Old Mary, and it was getting ran north. Uh, they got to Farragill, and there's a farmhouse nearby. Mm -hmm. It's one that can't be destroyed. It's not a tower. It's just a regular old structure, and uh, they took it in there. And you can get <laughs> up inside the second level, and siege weaponry cannot blow up this farmhouse. <laughs> so. Old Mary was on one side, uh, Daggerfall was on the other, and it was a group of Ebonheart guys inside. And we were just lobbing away at it, like, and they were just farming AP like crazy. It was cool. I loved the idea, like, that they went and did that, and that's really cool. They made their own little mini game of last, you know, survival. And then I think that was the one time where I've seen a green alliance where we went, all right, let's go in and get them, because this yeah. is getting ridiculous. Uh, and that was fun. That was really cool that. They took the CTF game and treated it sort of like a murder ball game for a moment or two. Right. I think it lasted for maybe a half hour or 45 minutes when they did that. Wow. It was really cool. <laughs> it was fun. Um, but that was probably my biggest, oh, that's, that's clever. <laughs> Tricky. <laughs> Tricky. I like it. Um, everyone just keeps asking about dueling. Dueling. Oh, dueling either yeah. same alliance or right. against others. Like what's Right now there's no happening? plans for dueling. Um, I know it's been requested like crazy. Mm. Uh, I know that people have made fight clubs. They, yep. There's like, go out yep. here, go to this place. We'll all fight. We'll duel. Um, to be to be clear, that is not against the the TES mm -hmm. the the toss the, the toss. Sorry. Mm. Unless um, you're actively farming. Unless but you're farming. We can see when yeah. you're doing that yeah. via right. logs. Right. Um, crazy Mad Sai, She actually streams a lot. She was mm -hmm. asking who your favorite O's player is. Oh, geez. just, it just used a fun to be one. Mark <laughs> oh, me too. Sad. Him and Roberts were... Uh, Roberts? Su I liked him. Um, I will say I right now my favorite is O'Day. Mm. Because the way he the way he uh, pitches is kind of how Jason and yeah. I throw the ball sidearm. <laughs> yep. yep. so, oh, one yeah, of the like side the, ones? The yeah. Side, yep. yeah, but he pitches and he's ridiculously, ridiculously accurate with it. That's how Torin broke his arm, isn't yes, it? One of, our one of our artists. One of our artists. Yeah, softball. <laughs> Never mm. again. Don't do it. <laughs> If you if you are a weekend warrior softball player, you know. Just be careful. Game developers playing softball that was no. a bad idea. <laughs> so many mm. trips to the ER. Yeah. Any more hashtag fix PVPs? I saw a lot. There's of those a lot of there. those. There's um, 
oh, what was it? Uh, ballista Confessions. <laughs> I like the Ballista Confession ones. Now that that's been one that's been interesting to see, like the the communication back and forth between the players on the board since the seas change. Right. Has been, I want to say, more constructive yep. back and forth, mm, it which has. has been great. Um, some and people the appreciate it. whoa, 30k, 40k, and the yeah. screenshots of that oh, helped yeah. us figure out that there like, was wait a bug. Minute. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. There's a lot of questions here that is not for Brian. Sorry, guys. I mean, I guess you can guess. <laughs> I'm not going to guess a combat, <laughs> combat question because then Robo yeah. will come. <laughs> He'll come running. He'll come punch me in the neck. Yeah. Um, it's the PvP team. That's why. Oh, now they're all going hashtag fix PvP. <laughs> there it is. Uh, 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 forward camps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody's oh, yeah, asking, you know, why'd you take them away? Are they coming back? What's the uh, deal? <laughs> well, right now, people still have a stockpile that are starting to appear because we went uh, with a buy to play and Tamriel Unlimited people flooding back that have played the game that have those camps still. So they still exist, um, but we do have some plans to change them. I don't know if they're going to come back after that point. Mm -hmm. um, one resing within the circle or the radius that appears on your map is one of the big changes. Uh, I want to shrink that radius to be maybe the size of the keep only to make it where if you if you see a forward camp being dropped you know this is where we're going to defend or this is where we're trying to f force an assault uh, plus the smaller radius gets rid of blood porting with right. you only be able to resurrect within the radius mm -hmm. um, those two pieces are, are in but the last bit of having a um, sort of a universal resurrection timer where mm -hmm. if you use a forward camp you can't use one again for x period of time Yep. That sort of works uh, on the server side. It recognizes it, but there's nothing telling you on your fi on your screen when you die. Hey, you can't resurrect another right. forward camp for X period of time. Um, we'd like to get that in and test it internally before we push it to like PTS for people to try uh, and say, yeah, this is good, or dear God, don't bring them back. So I know that is that's polarized just as much as the siege damage changes mm. recently. Something that comes up a lot, although it's a bit more of a kind of would be nice type mm -hmm. of thing, is um, Guild crests mm -hmm. on oh, flags. Yeah. And flags. Yeah, yeah on keep yeah, flags. Yeah. Yep. Banners. That that goes right up there with another one of those. Uh, if we can get the art time to do it and the mm -hmm. code time to get those things displayed, that would be awesome. Yeah. Because that's another way to show guild pride. Yep. Not only mm -hmm. you know on the walls have them have your banners there, um, but also on the guards themselves. Uh huh. Having them have your your, your tabard, tabard would be yeah. great. Um, but that's another one of those things of it'd be great to have. I don't know when we're going to be able to get it. Right. Okay. But it is something you're oh, entertaining. Oh, yeah. We, we actually would love to have that, for sure. Okay. Well, I think that just about wraps it up. But before you leave, mm -hmm. you have to put the nuts on your head. Why? Oh, man. They are just are they saying insisting? Nuts on my dying. Head? <laughs> now, should it be like, like a face hugger, or should it just go on my head? I think just <laughs> right on the head. Well, you've got the You've got to take forward. the hat off. No? <laughs> This is the way. That's the butt. butt. The head. That, there you go. No, that's the that's, that's the, butt. the butt. I thought this was the butt. <laughs> yeah. Don't troll him. <laughs> wow. And the internet memes will go crazy. <laughs> well, thank you, Brian. Sure, now that no we problem. did that, I think it's time for one last giveaway. Okay. Now that this has been on my head? Yes. <laughs> well, we're not giving that away. Uh, we are going to give away a bunch of just little random goodies. I think we've got some of them here. Because of that, you're going to type in goodies in chat. So we have um, ESO wallet. Very cool. Doo -doo -doo. And a keychain. <laughs> and look, and a mug. mug. So these three. Super exclusive. Will come to you as ESO goodie pack. So type in goodies into chat. There you go. Everyone's going crazy. It's actually a really crazy nice mug. It's very heavy. Wild. Yeah. See. Look at that. It's just yeah. Now, do they get points if you spell it with capitals or not? No, it no. doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> you do have to spell it right, though. I see some people say cookies, and that's not <laughs> that's not the word, you guys. <laughs> Goodies. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get a winner. It is Raz55. Ooh, I wonder if he's a Razumdar fan. Maybe. Think so. Not Raz54, but 55 is our last Congrats, winner for today. Congrats, Raz. Congratulations. Uh, Jason will be in touch with you on Twitch chat, either in your inbox or your other tab. Check them all. 
And sure. that wraps up our show. So thank you so much for watching and tuning in. Um, we will be back on April 10th, April two weeks from now. Already. I know, oh my gosh. I know. <laughs> Uh, we'd love to hear what you thought of today's show. If you have any feedback for us, be sure and post it on the forums. We'll take a look. Mm -hmm. And if you have any ESO uh, in Game and Live events, any art, music, photos of you with your netch on your head once they ship out, <laughs> we would love to see them. Send them to us at community at elderscrollsonline.com. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Well, with that, we will see you in Tamriel. So have a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you again in a couple weeks. Bye. Bye.